Hey, y'all, we really hope you enjoy this fun little side project that we're doing. Just as a warning, we were so worried about our mom's audio that we forgot to make sure that our own audio was doing well. So this episode um, does have not the best audio quality. Our mom's is great, but Jenny and I's is a little weak. So sorry about that. But we really hope you enjoy it anyway. Welcome to Our Mom Critiques Wild Though, a podcast where my sister and I force our mother to read Pale, Wild Though's least gory work. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. And I'm their mom, and I'm not so sure about this. This episode, we are diving into the prologue of Pale, but first we'd like to tell you a little bit about ourselves and how this podcast is going to work. Yeah, so if you guys have listened to our other podcasts, Pale in Comparison, you kind of know a little bit about me and Malia, but basically, as I just mentioned, we're sisters. She got me to read Worm, and I kind of became obsessed, because <laughs> Wild is a fantastic writer, and kind of convinced her to, well, read Pale by reading the, well, the part we're about to go over, actually, in the prologue, um, out loud to her. And our lovely mother here wants to support us. She heard we were doing a podcast, and so she was wondering kind of how she could get involved, and we're having such fun talking about it, we thought it'd be kind of an entertaining side podcast to do. <laughs> so hopefully you guys like it. Yeah, we Jenny actually tried to get Mom to read Worm, and it was a bit too much for her, not her thing. But when I was like, Jen, let's make a podcast, and Jenny was like, great. Mom was like, I want to listen. Like, that sounds so exciting. And we were like, well, you have to read this whole other thing first. And when, so she read the prologue, we started talking about it, and we were like, this is hilarious, let's record it. Yeah, I I do have to say, yeah, I really, this is not the kind of book that mom normally reads, right, mom? Yeah, Uh, this is not the kind of book she normally reads. I'm not really sure if she's going to like it very much, just because of the type of story it is, (laughs) but she does have some great opinions and, and everything that I feel like are good to share. Yeah. I was going to say, Mom, before we start, what kind of, how would you describe the books you read or you enjoy and you yeah. try to get us to read? Well, first, I wanted, I wanted to say something about reading with you guys is that I've always really liked, um, you guys push your books on me. I mean, books that I don't, I don't read fantasy, but you totally got me into, of course, Harry Potter and then Percy Jackson and some other ones that I love. There's one that I'm still waiting for second book for like 10 years. What is that, Malia? The King Killer Chronicles, you're waiting for the third book. Yeah, yeah, what's happening? But Nobody anyway, knows. I, I <laughs> but anyway, so you you guys have gotten me into books. And so I try to, as a good mother, try to get you to read some well rounded stuff like, you know, A Tale of Two Cities is really hard, but you know, Charles Dickens and Anna Karenina, which everybody in the world, it's a prerequisite, you know, you just need to read that stuff. And I swear, I don't know about Jenny, but Malia has still not read that book. Because she just thinks it's, yeah, get this, though, she thinks it's like, too awful, or too scary. I mean, really, not not scary. It's it's too depressing. Have you seen blood coming out of this person's eyeballs? I mean, (laughs) I don't know what to tell you. I think you can handle it, Malia. Okay, but anyway, okay, back to the question. So my, what the books I read, I like classics like that. I probably like historical fiction as my favorite. And then, and I go back and forth. And every once in a while, I'll read something that's a little more challenging. And then I'll switch to like some kind of little Amish romance or something that (laughs) takes like two days to read that doesn't have a lot of substance to it. But but it's like a little beach book, you know. So that's how I go. And then every once in a while, I'll read a self help book because you have to do that, you know, to better yourself. One more thing I forgot before we get into talking about the story. Jenny and I have read a lot of Wild Bo's work, but for this podcast in particular, we're only talking about Pale, so it should be spoiler-free for basically whatever our mom has read is what we're going to talk about. So uh, all you people who haven't read other parts of Wild Bo, you're safe. You can hang out with us in this podcast. All right, Mom, before we start getting into the actual content of it, what do you think, like, what's your basic impression of the story so far, and how do you how do you like it? Okay, I 
Um, it's definitely not my genre. <laughs> and I, but I have to say that Wildbo is a really good writer. I mean, I'm kind of sucked in now, you know, and it's really not my thing. It's really a strange book, actually. <laughs> I mean, <it's, laughs> most of it, I don't even understand what's going on, but I'm hoping they will explain it, you know, and there won't be just monkeys running around for no reason, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> so so it, it kind of draws you in so you can't wait till what's next. But I did like the writing a lot, liked it a lot better than I thought I would. Awesome. All right, we're going to first start with like, the discussion of the about page. Um, did you happen to read that at all? Did you read the about page? Yeah, that was... I, no, honestly, I I read it three times and I have no idea what it said. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what about was about. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I try to break it up a little bit. I kind of write it pretty much... Starts talking about practices, whatever those are, that can make you... I gave three examples. that said you can trade skin with a snake. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Especially you, mom, you don't like snakes very much. You can make the wind listen to you, or you can summon really scary monsters. Any thought about what the heck that means, or you're just like, no? (laughs) No, no, actually, I'm kind of intrigued. And I can think of some times when all those would be useful. So there. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When is the snake skin useful? Uh, You know, trying to scare somebody else, or make somebody feel better about their dry skin. I don't know. I mean, that's a terrible one. <laughs> but I mean, there's always stuff, you know, Halloween. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's true. It'd be like, you'd be like a before and after picture for like a lotion company. It'd be like, I used to have skin like this. Now it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he was talking about advertising um, when he mentioned that. Yeah. But. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so basically, those are some types of practices that you can have. There are a couple ways to get into it. The first way they talk about it is be born into it. They talk about like old families and having traditions and having basically centuries of deals that accumulate power, it seems like, so that they can do these practices. So, the second way, stumble onto it. So, you find like a weird book or like a creepy mysterious artifact and that like does something and gives you insight into these practice thingies and the third one direct deal that says that's the oldest way it says in there to make a deal with fae or goblins or different others essentially which one of those three would you pick mom <laughs> uh I, I like the stumble upon it thing okay i know i mean i just think that's kind of cool that you're you know messing around on the beach and look under a rock and here's this you know weird looking who knows a ring it's always a ring Mm -hmm. right and unless it's yeah i thought you're gonna be like a child's like shovel or something oh yeah unless it's a a child shovel yeah yeah it's like a sand anyway (laughs) okay um interesting yeah so another thing i noticed that it said on the about pages you can't or like can't lie with practices. Did you notice that or? Yeah, I did. I like that. You like that? Okay. Well, because I'm not good at lying. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. And what do you think that means, mom? Uh, really? I, uh, it's got, the, you're, you're bound by some kind of a oath or spell or something and you just can't do it, you know? Like you're, like you physically can't do it, you think? Yeah. It's like that movie Liar or whatever it is. You just can't oh, do it. Jim Carrey. Yeah. With Jim, like yeah, you try, Jim but like the pen Yeah, and it just doesn't hurt. come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's okay. what I think. Okay. All right. Um, any other thoughts about the about page you want to go over? Or is that pretty much it? That No, that covers it. Did I get anything right? Is this a quiz? I, it's not a quiz. We're just kind of going over like what what it was saying. <laughs> those are okay. all, those no, are all the be... pieces of information we got from that, right? So okay. just kind of going over it. All right, so I'm going to go over a chapter summary, just kind of quickly explaining what happened in this prologue here, and then we'll kind of get into it, okay? We meet Louise, who's experiencing some very unsettling things in her kitchen. Though she's pretty sure she's hallucinating, she decides to follow a giant bleeding beast driving in her car. After a bit, she follows it on foot, eventually leading to the town's hockey arena. Louise seems to find the beast's final resting place. She meets a few mysterious strangers and makes a deal. All right, Mom. So Louise is experiencing some shit. <laughs> what do you think about Louise? First impressions, full impressions. 
Oh my gosh. Louise, Louise makes poor decisions, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she really yeah. does remember sometimes getting out of the car i'd be like teasing with you but i'd be like make good decisions because i think i heard it on some, and you guys hated that but anyway no she makes poor decisions you know i can't get the picture out of my head i still can't get that picture of the blood dripping from her eyes i mean it's just a little too graphic so i wish i didn't picture that all the time like all the time yeah. you're just eating dinner yeah like all th- well, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot. Yeah. I mean, Louise bothers me and she needs to just, you know how there's, there's sympathy and there's empathy. I mean, when the beast, you know, makes this big roar, her little eyes start just dripping and stuff. She needs to be learned how to be more empathetic. Just don't be so sensitive, Louise. You're, you know, she needs to toughen up. Be empathetic instead of sympathetic. Exactly. Oh, just like, exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So she's she's just letting this get to her too much. Way too much. You know, it's like being a nurse. Now, Jenny and I are nurses, and you have to do some tough stuff. I mean, you know, you have to give shots to little kids and do things like that. And you you feel bad and you care about them a lot, but you just, you know, you give the shot. That's true. It doesn't really help if you start crying with the kid. It, it really doesn't. <laughs> that's true. That so there. That's <laughs> So I guess as a nurse, what do you think about Louise's inability to take care of herself? Like, what would you say to Louise if you were her nurse in terms of like her diabetes and stuff? Which one are you asking? Honestly, whichever. I mean, I feel like we see a lot of non-compliant patients. I feel like it tends to be a little bit easier for the doctor because you can get away with saying things a little bit more bluntly. I mean, that doesn't really stop a lot of nurses anyway. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean... Our, our dad's a doctor, too, so or Malia's the odd man out in terms of medicine. <laughs> but so I feel like he would probably just be like, you're going to kill yourself, and you need to get your shit together, essentially. And that's what I'd like to say. That's what I'd like to say to a lot of patients, but I don't because I don't really want to get penalized my job. And mm. Unfortunately, I probably would. Penalize, honestly. I, okay, I'll just say a different take is that I probably wouldn't bother telling her that because I probably give her some looks, but she, yeah. she knows already. She knows mm. already. It's like, it's not like she, it's going to re- like, she's going to have this big epiphany, like, wow, nobody, you know, I, nobody <laughs> ever really explained that to me that I shouldn't be eating, you know, chocolate cake every night and, and blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. She, she knows. And um, you could, you know, I mean, she could definitely talk about it. I agree with you. It just, I feel like there are a lot of patients who people have kind of tiptoed around. And so sometimes people Mm. do need that kind of extra, like, she probably kind of gets that already. But like, I don't know, I'd probably assume that she needs to have someone tell her that straight. And then after that, you know. Yeah, it's probably not going to hurt. Yeah, I mean, you might get fired, but... You wouldn't get, how would you get fired? I mean, that's not from my job job, but like as the so oh, from patients her. can fire the they can fire <laughs> yeah. a nurse essentially. Mm. Um, so if they if oh you, yeah if you do something to make them mad or I mean, and sometimes it's rightfully so. Like if you if you do something like offensive or you know they can just be like I do not want this person isn't my nurse anymore and essentially fire fire them. So I mean I probably still I, mean, I don't think I'd get fired from my job for saying that, but I probably would get a talking to being like that's not really. That's not appropriate for you to say that. Hmm. I know. but (laughs) Before we move on, Mom, I have one more question for you. Do you think that Louise is just seeing things or do you think that what she's experiencing is real? We can also wait. It's it's real. No, it's just I don't even have it's real. I'm into this. (laughs) She this is way beyond hallucinations. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, hallucinations can be pretty darn realistic. No, you now you guys, you're going to let me, you're going to tell me three chapters down. You're going to go, you were right, mom. I, I'm not telling you one way or another. I'm just saying like <laughs> hallucinations can be really realistic. Like, yeah, I, I know we've both had patients with hallucinations, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they seem 100% real to them. Right. But I mean, yeah, it could be real. It could be not. I don't know. I mean, I do know, but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's funny with um, Pale in Comparison, the other podcast. Um, there's a lot of conversations about law and legal things. And so I'm kind of like the legal expert. And in this one, it feels like it's going to be a lot of medical. 
<laughs> I couldn't rely on y'all a lot. <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit. It's exciting. Certain things. <laughs> so after that, Louise decides that she's going to follow this big howling beast that she has a lot of sympathy for and maybe needs to not have quite as much sympathy for. So yeah, do you have any thoughts about that part, Mom? Just when she decides, okay, let's go and gets into her car and starts kind of driving after it? Yeah, no, no, it just it bothers me. Because um, again, it's it's poor decisions. And it reminds me of that Geico commercial, you know, everybody, somebody's chasing them, you know, some bad guy, and they run in and they're like, let's hide behind the chainsaws. Yeah. And one guy, you know, <laughs> and, and then one guy's let's get in the car. And they're like, are you crazy? You know, so and then the the monster guy is just shaking his head and they all run to the cemetery. I mean, you know, so that's <laughs> Louise. <laughs> I forgot about that commercial. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do you think that the this big beast thing like do you think it's dangerous to her oh, that's a good question i don't know why but i don't think it is okay but just she's making dumb decisions and shouldn't be running out into well the snow. i mean that just because i yeah just because i think it might be a friendly beast doesn't mean it is i mean it's really big and hairy and bleeding so i still think it's a bad decision that's fair okay so louise is driving she parks on the side of a road near the gas station where she sees some, like, neighborhood kids and thinks about how small Kennet is. Kennet, the, the town. But for some reason that I couldn't figure out while I was rereading it, she decides to get out of her car and follow the beast on foot. Maybe it went in a certain way where her car couldn't go or something. So soon after she leaves her car, she sees what she thinks might be a bunch of monkeys who start pursuing the beast right along with her. So what did you think of this part, Mom? It's just so weird. I mean, I don't know. Of course, she has to follow the monkeys, you know, follow the monkeys down the <laughs> down the stairway that leads through the town. I mean, it, you have to really just be willing to accept all these things that are so unrealistic. Don't let dad read this book. Oh, okay, that'd be painful. Again, that could be hallucinations, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because... The, she talks about how the kids at the gas station don't see or notice this thing like standing right over them. Like she's like, I'm in my car and yeah, they don't, and even don't see it. the bleeding and stuff. It's because they're in a different little bubble or a different universe. She's in this one with the people she meets at the end. And I don't understand it. I just that's what I think. Yeah. So then Louise makes it through town. The monkeys stop following her near when she gets to the middle of the city and she continues on alone. Yeah, I would expect no less of Louise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so she's she's thwarted. She gets to the big hockey arena, the KA, but there's a whole bunch of cars leaving. Apparently there was some sort of game or something. And so a whole bunch of people are leaving at all at the same time. And she tries to cross the street and she can't. And there's people honking and she doesn't have a coat on and people think she's losing it. She sees her old classmate who like really tries to convince her to get in the car so he can drive her home. And partially because the other cars are honking at him, he finally just kind of gives up, lets her cross the street. And so she can continue following the beast, which I think is like kind of out of sight by now. She's worried that maybe she's lost it. Yeah. What did you think about this whole part? I think it has nothing to do with anything. So, I mean, why did they put that part in? I mean, so I don't. Oh, I, I kind of took it to show like, I mean, she's talking to somebody. Obviously, he's kind of concerned about her mental and physical health. She hears that really loud howl that he really obviously doesn't hear. He didn't hear. Um, yeah. So it's kind of just like kind of giving, I think, another insight to like an outsider's perspective on how crazy she's looking. You know, that's kind of okay. What I yeah, that makes sense. I, it kind of builds up some suspense, I think, in terms of like, maybe it's going to get away. Like, maybe she's going to lose it. Maybe she won't be able to follow mm -hmm. it anymore because she's mm -hmm. been delayed there for so long. All right. So Louise makes her way around the arena. She encounters some other people who know her, but she kind of brushes them off and makes it to the outdoor ice rink, which has started to melt. And she finds a bloody silhouette of the beast stained into the ice rink. I mean, honestly, I'm lost. Did, it, did he say it? I mean... Is he melted into the ice rink or did he just fall and all the blood is there and he went further into the woods or yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I want to read some more because it has grabbed me enough to want to know what happened to the beast. 
when you read this, what are your emotions like at this point? How do you feel other than confused, I guess, or just mostly confused? <laughs> confused and interested. I'm kind of intrigued and a little bit irritated with Louise. <laughs> but um, okay. yeah, there's definitely characters I like and some that I don't that much. And um, yeah, I think mostly I just I want to it, it's really good writing. I want to see what happens next. Awesome. Okay, so so Louise is standing there, and she's staring at the blood, and she overhears this group of people who are all talking about it. They notice that she notices, and one of them walks over. And I'm really curious to hear your thoughts about each of these people, so we can kind of go through <laughs> one by one. So there's the guy who works at the shop, the local store that she recognizes, whose name is Matthew. But we're gonna, actually, we're going to talk about Matthew last. But he's the one who <laughs> comes up and approaches her. So then there's this other lady, who I don't think ever gives her name, and you never really see her face. What do you what do you think about her? Uh, yeah, I don't like her. I don't I mean, I don't like her. She's creepy. She's she's in charge. And she's she's really important. I don't think she Matthew's really nice. I'm not supposed to talk about Matthew yet. But he's a nice guy. But this other lady, she doesn't have a lot of emotions. She doesn't care that much if Louise, Louise lives or dies. She's just there to protect whatever it is that they're hiding. So no, she's kind of spooky, but she's really important. She's going to show up later. Who the kids are? Who who knows? Whose kids are those? Right. So there's a whole bunch of children. Yeah, they shouldn't be there. It's you no don't place think for like, children. They're not the <clears throat> creepy lady who's in charge of kids. They're not Matthew and Edith's kids. They're they're nobody's kids. No, I that think are they're there. Rand. I think they're little. They're little other orth orphans. That's my guess. <laughs> what do you mean by other? orphans because they're others they're not human these other? people that's what i'm waiting to find out <laughs> <laughs> don't give me that you guys have read more it's it's something where they're not quite human they're either dead or half dead or from another planet or who knows but they're the others yes okay and louise isn't another yet but she's close okay okay <laughs> Wait, why do you think Louise is almost another? Yeah, actually, that, that's a good because they're because how else was she able to communicate with those people with that group and see the beast and the flying monkeys? You know, even though they weren't okay. flying, I just I like that. Keeping <laughs> but, <Wizard> of Oz. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So she's so that's why she was able to see them is because she's near. They were like, if you're really young, really old, really in pain. And there was something else that you could see those things. Okay. Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think she's about to drop into the world of the others. So what about the fact that Matthew works at the at the store and she's seen him, she recognizes him. Can other people talk to Matthew? Yeah, that's, be oh, oh yeah, he's not really dead, huh? Yeah, yeah. Doggone it. That's a good question. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, Matthew, it's like the angel thing. We're trying to save Matthew for last because... Oh, okay. Just because we're trying to save the best for last, right? So um, what do you think about Edith? Edith is just... I mean, Edith doesn't have much of a personality. You know, she's just... Um, she's fine. She wears a cute little hat. And she's Matthew's lifetime partner, whatever that means. I mean, you know, I don't know what that means, but she doesn't... I'm not that interested in her. I mean, she's probably fine but it's Matthew I like and Louise he needs to save her and I know I'm not supposed to talk about Matthew yet no, sorry. Go ahead and talk okay, about yeah, Matthew. Now, tell Get us everything about Matthew <laughs> okay Matthew now he's you know he's just kind he's the kind of boy that you would really like it if if your daughter ended up with him because you know he's going to treat her well if she's cold he's going to give her his coat He's going to make sure, you know, that if she's sick, that she, you know, takes some Tylenol, has some orange juice, lies down. He really is a nice guy and um, wants to help her out. That's that's what I think of him. And I know this is a little off base, but I can really I kind of think I don't know about Edith, but I kind of think that Matthew is going to end up being being with Louise like they should just be together. I mean, Matthew is really very kind and a nice guy. And, you know, Louise is kind of a mess. Matthew would be really nice for her to have in his life. And he seems like that kind of guy, like he's a helper and he really likes to 
take care of people. And Louise needs taking care of more than most people I've ever seen. So um, I can really see them winding up together. And um, I hope it happens. I it might take till the end of the book. But that's, that's what I think is going to happen. And what's her name? Edith. I, I don't know what to say about Edith. Maybe life partner doesn't even mean life partner. Maybe they're <laughs> brother and sister. And that's what you call them. Because they mm-hmm. both died at the same time. I mean, I don't know what it means. We don't know yet. Don't, know don't yet. make assumptions. We don't know. All right. Um, so basically, you think by the end of this book, Louise and Matthew are going to get together in a romantic relationship? I'm just saying that that's the that would be the best ending. Okay. <laughs> the most satisfying. <laughs> Everybody could close the book and be like, yeah, that was really, I'm I'm really happy I read that. <laughs> I'm just wondering you how your opinion, if your opinion is going to stay the same or not as we go on. We'll just really, have to keep yeah. coming back to that. Um, so it okay. seems like some of your theory or some of your desire to see them together comes from this like next part. So Matthew and Louise make kind of some kind of a deal, right? Uh, um, so it seems like Louise has agreed that she's going to forget pretty much everything that happened, in le- except for when some people come to talk to her. In exchange, Matthew's going to take some of her pain away, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, and I'll kiss you because this is the way that this works. How was the kiss and what should they have done instead? Okay, can I just, I just have to say, I forgot about that. That is so wrong. I mean, that that is so wrong because um, that kiss didn't have any feeling to it. So that does bother me. It was just nothing. And th- you don't seal a deal like that with a dripping blood beast with a kiss. I mean, it's just, it's not the kind of book. I don't know where they came up with that. They should have definitely drawn out a knife and cut both. No, I'm serious. No, and cut goodness. both their fingers and then been blood brothers and sisters. I mean, that's the only way they could have done that. But no, Matthew has to be and then he has to ask permission. I mean, give me a break. That is so politically correct. I want to just die. So is it no, no, Edith, is it okay with you if if I seal the deal by giving Louise a kiss? And she's like, sure, whatever. And then, uh, uh, you know, I'm just like, God, no, I can't go there. So that part was really, um, really dumb. And I didn't like it at all. Yeah. And no, so that is not the reason I think they should be together. I really didn't like that kiss. It was, it was really dumb. So there. <laughs> That's but I, I, I felt like it fit, but not, not in a romantic way, but. A kiss? What else could they have done, Jen? See, I want them to be blood brothers and sisters. What do you think? But, I mean, a if kiss? they're blood brother and sisters, then can they really have a can romantic they get relationship? Yeah. <laughs> You're so question. weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys just think too hard. You're thinking way too hard about this. Just stop. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's take a little bit on that. <laughs> yeah. So before we move on to the last part i'm curious mom what do you think about what is happening H- how are these people involved with the situation are they the good guys are they the bad guys like what's did they kill the thing did they not kill the thing are they just random people what, the there beast? yeah he might not even be he's not even dead okay okay he That's sunk fair. under the ice and he's gonna thaw out no i don't even know <laughs> that part. Love it. no Love it. i don't even know i will just say they're not good or bad. They're just like normal people, except they're others. So whatever that means, they're different. Yeah, whatever that means. And um, but I don't think I don't think you can say they're good or bad. They're like everybody. That's deep. Mom. Except Matthew. He's really good. <laughs> Matthew's the best. <laughs> he is. He's kind of the best. Yeah. Pretty much Matthew for president, right? Like just everything. Well, no. yeah, I, I, I don't know. Matthew for a love interest. Yeah, Matthew to take care of Louise. Matthew is Mr. Nice Guy. So then the, um, the prologue ends when Louise wakes up feeling better than she has in a really long time. But things are a little bit weird. Uh, she's asleep in her recliner, and she doesn't like sleeping in her recliner with her blanket on her because it makes her feel old. And she's also parked her car sideways, which is weird. She also feels really, really sad, like this deep sense of loss and sadness. But she feels great otherwise, and so she decides to have her morning cigarette early, slash her daily cigarette early, 
And her neighbors come by because they're concerned about her. They saw her yesterday and they just feel kind of weird also. But um, they agree to help her clean the house because they seem like really great people. And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting some people. So I should clean. So I guess what did you think about this last part? Oh, there are so many things. I mean, first of all, those neighbors could be the people she's expecting. Did you ever think of that? They could be. And... That's kind of rude if she's expecting guests and has the guests clean <laughs> her house with her, don't you think? No, but you're thinking too hard. I mean, maybe that's... <laughs> maybe they've appeared and nobody... And she just doesn't know it. <laughs> and then... Um, and then the car parked sideways. Yeah, that's... Well, obviously... Dear Matthew wanted to make sure she got home safely. So he might be from another planet, so he doesn't know how to drive. So that's what happened. <laughs> he parked sideways. He did the, He got her home. He did the best he could. Mm -hmm. And he carried her in, put her on the recliner, and covered with the blankets. So sweet. Mm -hmm. He's a really nice guy. Right. And Mars, everyone sleeps on recliners. Do you have any hope for Louise in general, but also specifically as a nurse in terms of like her diabetes? Like, Do you think this one good morning is going to start a lifetime of good choices. Wow. My hope for, for Louise is Matthew. But the sad part is because he's taken her pain. Look, he made her have a good day again. But the sad part is she he could die and Louise could live and she could be fine. Oh, that's really sad. I hope that doesn't happen. But right now that's kind of what's happening. He took her pain and she's having a really good day. And hope for Louise. Yeah, this this book could go anywhere. So, yeah, I have hope. <laughs> so, while the, like, for the story, um, he has, like, some extra materials, which you don't have to read to get the story. But, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't read them, because they're kind of cool. Like, it's either um, extra text or pictures or different things like that that he makes to kind of bring a little bit more world building in. So, one of those things, the first one that we got was the brochure of Kenneth. Um, did you take a look at that, Mom? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was really neat. I like when they add things like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I guess, what are your thoughts on the town itself, just looking at that? Um, I don't know. I thought it was a nice small town and um, resort area, like Whistler, except probably not that mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a small, a small town. And um, the only thing I thought was a little bit strange was having a staircase, you know, going from the gas station down. I, it was really a little weird, but useful. I mean, it's kind of neat. True. What are your thoughts on the annotations? Um, all I know is something big is going to happen at 530. And um, the L could be Louise. And I guess, who else did it have? It had Arnold and Tom. Well, but I, I think I don't know who the three people are that are going to meet at 530. But mm -hmm. I, um, something big is happening. Yes. Okay. There's, there's that list as well, right? Did you take a yeah. look at like all that? Yeah, study? yeah. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I mean, they're going <laughs> to make a potion. You know, they've got all this stuff to put in there. So the three people that, that meet at 530 are bringing all these random things and they're going to make a potion and i don't know why i mean are they killing the beast or making the beast come to life again or it has nothing to do with anything you know okay. and um and who are those three people i don't know but yeah see that's how that's how he's sucking us in because <laughs> nobody can put it down now <laughs> yeah no no it's it's good so if you had to guess I, you kind of like alluded to it but like if you had to guess what kind of potion they're going to be making with those ingredients, what would you think? Yeah, I know. I didn't really think about it. I guess just what I said, it's either to do good for the beast or bad for the beast. You know, what if it and doesn't have to do with the beast. No, I know. No idea. Maybe it's to make it snow again, you know, so the ski, ski resort can stay open. <laughs> you know? I don't know, Jen. There you go. Um, That's true. I know that ice was melting. That could... That yeah, could be the, the ice real is focus melting. of the story, just to make sure, like, <laughs> gotta get Canada, we, we gotta get this town cold again, gotta fix global warming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, great. So, that was our summary of the first three little pieces of Pale and all of Mom's thoughts. We thought a good wrapping up segment would be what my mom calls three things. So, ever since we were little, when we would come home from school... Mom would make us tell her three things about our day. 
So we'd have to sit there and think of three things, good, bad, whatever. And we thought, as some fun revenge, it'd be great to get mom to say three (laughs) things that she took away from the story. So like things she liked, things she didn't like, questions she has, predictions, things she thinks are going to happen, things she wants to happen, right? So mom has compiled a list of three main takeaways from this set of materials, and she's going to go through them now. Okay. I I think this is really fun. That's nice. You guys (laughs) turned it on me. So um, I will say the first takeaway is that I'm kind of surprised after the first page, and I was kind of horrified. I really do like it. The writing is really good. And I can't wait to see what happens next. You know, I mean, I don't I really want to see what the potion is and the map and all that stuff. So no, I'm hooked on it now. And I think I well, anyway, number two, all that dripping blood really bothers me. I can't get, I mean, everything was dripping blood. Yeah, I didn't like that. And number three, my final prediction is that Matthew and Louise are destined to be together. <laughs> so there you All go. Right. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. I appreciate that. I, I feel like that's a really good overview of what you took away from these chapters, Mom. So thank you. That was a nice little sum up. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah, you. That pretty much does sum it up. Uh, one other thing I kind of want to talk about while we were talking with mom about pale first, before we decided to do a podcast, she started talking about different books that she thought we should read instead. So, um, we just thought it'd be kind of interesting to see what her current book recommendations are, what we should read or anything that she's currently reading. So what are you reading currently? Currently... I'm reading this book about, I I don't even remember the name, Jen, started it yesterday. And there's, there's like this family that just, they're all all my books are about dysfunctional families, I think. So this one, um, they're, it's like, one or 200 years ago, and this family is living in this mud hut or cave or something in West Texas. And they're, the kids seem to kind of take care of themselves. And um, yeah, I can't even tell you anything about that one. I've just, it sounds really good because they got the first thing they had was a flash flood and all three kids had to climb this tree and hang on to the tree all night. So that was kind of cool. They made it back. And then, and, and the um, dad is, they was super happy. The mom, it seems real religious and just said, Oh, that was God's will then, you know, and, and it's be, I'm the one who saved you because I prayed all night. And it was just kind of, yeah, I, but I always get into these weird books like that. And, um, see, I thought you were going to say that, and all three kids died in the flood, which is very on brand for the type no, of book that, that you be, read. Yeah. <laughs> no, that will happen at the end, Malia. Okay. <laughs> so, but anyway, so I can't, I don't know what this one's going to be, but yeah, that's what I just started reading. I was going to tell you guys to read this book, Tell Me Three Things, because I've read that. And just because of the three things thing made me so happy. And that was kind of a good book. But it was another, I don't even know why I'm recommending it. But it was kind of, I always do that. <laughs> Sorry. Start. It was kind of good, good start. Yeah. So it was kind of good because it was like somebody, she's, she's, her mom met this guy on the internet and they got married and of course now her life is horrible and so she's she gets starts texting somebody who she doesn't know who it is either texting or something on social media I don't know what it was but anyway she she goes they go back and forth this conversation for like a couple of months and so she thinks it's this one guy that she has a crush on but actually I have a it it ends up being this other guy it's like you know and um, that's a story. And I don't know why it's called Tell Me Three Things, but I just, everybody should read it because that was kind of hmm. sweet. <laughs> okay. Oh, like brother. Matthew and Louise, except it's that's like right. Louise and, and the other person who <laughs> exactly be involved. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for that recommendation. We appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, but wait, let me just say one more thing. If you, if you can read this book, this is especially for my daughters, but anybody out there, if you can read this book, you can handle Anna Karenina, okay? <laughs> you need to just do that because it's going to it's gonna be on all your college exams. People it, in your real life expect you to know this, you know? And so, you know, it's like Robert Frost's poetry. You oh, know, if you, you don't have a clue who he is, then... I don't know. I, I mean, you, you need to be more well-read. 
So yeah, Anna Karenina is my next book recommendation because that's light reading after this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can tell you, I mean, I don't know about you, Malia, but I've never had anyone quiz me on Anna Karenina before. Just mom. Serious? Yes. Even in your college, like your, oh, yeah. your exam to get... Oh, oh yeah. I know. Things have changed, right? It's still coming, Jen. <laughs> See? I did recite one of the poems mom um, made us memorize as kids in uh, an English class in college for extra credit. But Oh, my God. I'm so proud. Yeah. Which one? The Robert Frost one? Mm -hmm, the Stopping and Woods on a Snowy Evening. Yes. Oh, I'm so, so happy. Before listening See? to the radio in carpool, um, when we were in middle school, she would basically make us recite poetry uh, because she said that we need to be cultured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked yeah. out. It did. You guys are, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, now we're yeah. on a podcast. There you go. I mean, never <laughs> yeah. would have happened without Robert Frost, right? Literary right. experts. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Uh, All right. Um, so we also kind of wanted to talk about a possible giveaway. So, Malia, I'll have you talk about that. This was actually kind of our mom's idea. Mom's passion project is she makes cards and, like, greeting cards. She does scrapbooking stuff. Lots of like paper craft stuff. She's crafty. And she thought, right. Um, and she thought it would be really fun as another way she could contribute to this podcast. If she would make cards kind of inspired by Pale and by Wild Bow, and we would give them away. And you could send somebody that you love or want to convince to read Pale or listen to one of our podcasts, a beautiful handwritten note in the wonderful card that our mom has made. Mm -hmm. Yay! <laughs> or a Christmas card, you know. I mean, kind of a messed up Christmas card, possibly. But <laughs> yeah, it's probably gonna have something to do with blood because mom's really fixated on it. But you never know. It might not. Yeah, I you mean, never it might know. just be like a picture of Matthew with like a big heart. And, like, it could. Hey, know. that's a good one. Or it might be <laughs> flying monkeys. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, well, yeah we got it. The card's not made yet, so um, I have to decide. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. So if you want to enter our giveaway um, and receive one of our mom's handmade cards, you can either comment on the Reddit post for this episode or tweet at Pale Comparison, which is our account, with the hashtag our mom critiques Wildbow. And we will take all the people who comment on this Reddit post and all the people who tweet at us and we will enter you into a drawing. And one of you lucky listeners will win this card. A fantastic we'll card. Yeah, we'll reach out to the winner and get your mailing address so that we can mail you the card, and then you can just revel in our mom's artistry. Okay, thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wildbow, go to patreon.com slash wildbow. And if you want to support me, check out my blog at www.createwithcheryl.me. That's Cheryl with a C, by the way. You can also check out Pale in Comparison, a podcast where Malia uses her knowledge of Pale to guess what happens in Pact, one of Wild Bo's other web serials. And I try not to laugh when she is wrong, or more often try not to spoil anything. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Also be on the lookout for that Reddit post where you can share your thoughts about this episode. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.